Joining us right now via Zoom chat is Father Carlos Martins. Good morning to you, Father. Good morning. Praise be to God. It's been a long time since uh, we've seen you or talked to you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. How are you? Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, Joe. I'm, I'm doing just fine. Praise be to God. Uh, when I saw your post on Facebook, a brand new podcast, uh, this looks like it's going to be a big deal. So tell us about what uh, new project you have on the horizon. Sure. Well, uh, I've served as uh, an exorcist for many years. And about three years ago, um, two producers approached the Holy See with an idea for programming on modern day experiences with evil and modern day kind of occurrences of, of the supernatural. And so they wanted to, to give people uh, uh, a kind of a flavor of what's happening today. And they went to the Vatican because the Vatican has a, a you know, has departments that deal with that very thing. So they, they had approached the, the dicastery of the saints, such at the time called the, the Congregation for the Causes of Saints, and uh, with this idea. And they were met with a lot more welcome than most people uh, are met with when they request for the Vatican to kind of open up their resources. Mm. And, and the reason why was uh, the, the, the quality of the two producers. So one was uh, John Sullivan, who is the producer of Gosnell and the movie Unplanned. The other one was Ryan Bethay, who does um, the, the, lots of uh, kind of... Um, uh, Protestant apologetics, uh, Christian apologetics in the Protestant community, I guess I should say. Mm -hmm. But the character of them uh, impressed the Holy See so much that uh, the Secretary of State then uh, referred them to me. Uh, so they, uh, because I do work with relics worldwide, so there, there are healings that occur regularly at the expositions that, that are conducted. And the fact that I serve as an exorcist and have served as a consultant uh, with certain individuals in the Holy See in that area, they said, look, go contact Father Martins. He can guide you with both things. And so this is the fruit of that. And the, the purpose of it is, is to give people a, a catechesis, a thorough catechesis on what the ministry of exorcism is, and it's timely today simply because exorcists are being called upon more than we ever have. So there is a de-Christianization of our culture, and that de-Christianization is causing people to turn uh, to paganism and to mm -hmm. occultism, and and that's that's just a natural. It's a natural progression of one eliminate when one eliminates the the spiritual guidance from their life that is instituted by Christ, when when they eliminate Christ who has come to show the way to the Father, then people are going to turn to unhealthy ways of of living out of spirituality because we can't help it but be spiritual beings, uh, and so. Uh, this is uh, something to speak to that and to and to kind of remedy that effect. Mm. So when I watched the trailer for your upcoming podcast, which releases, I think this in a, just a few days from now, the 25th of January, I think we can begin to see the, the first episode. It looks like production values are pretty high on this. So they're really putting in a lot of effort. Yeah, so I I Heart Media spent a lot of money to produce this, and you know, for the Holy See to be involved, uh, for me to be involved, uh, we needed an assurance that our message is going to be given uncensored and unadulterated. Um, you know, Hollywood entities, media entities, uh, they are in the business of 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 selling entertainment of of a of accumulating viewers, and and we can certainly appreciate that. Um, and the way they do that in this field is, you know, exorcism. They want to sell a sizzle, and that sizzle for exorcism is going to be the bizarre. It's going to be the 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 battles with evil, and it's going to be the the diabolical phenomena that you see in in things like the movie The Exorcist, and and that 
th- those kind of phenomena, they, they put bum, bums in seats, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, they sell a sizzle. But, and, and, also, and while I can certainly speak to that, we want to go beyond that. We want to catechize. And so what, what I heart agreed to, and, and I have to, I have to admit it was a delight. It was a, simply a delight to work with them and to work with the producer who brought this about Ryan Bethay was mm-hmm. the fact that the church retained the right to veto everything. Oh, cool. Uh, so everything up until, up until even the final cut, so that, hey, look, this word is is misplaced, it's out of place, or uh, that simply goes on too long. Uh, we want that eliminated, we want that cut, we want that re- re-recorded with something else. Uh, so they agreed to that, and, and that, was, that was mightily impressive. I remember the attorney that we had that looked over this, this, this agreement, uh, the, 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 the attorney being Sam Curfee, one of the only... May, perhaps the only Catholic attorney in Hollywood, uh, he, he said to me, frankly, uh, you know, I'm putting this all in our terms in the contract. They will never agree to this because no company is going to ever agree to spend mm-hmm. a phenomenal amount of money on a production and then give the veto to somebody else wow. that, and at, you know, at the final cut uh, that uh, they can say, look, this, this can't air this way. But, but that's exactly what they did. They agreed to it. And so this podcast is is the fruit of that. You know, Father, that's really fascinating to me because I was just thinking I was I have a guilty pleasure of watching some of the ancient alien stuff, uh, the conspiracy theories and all those things. I think it's hilarious. And I was watching an episode they did about demons and I was like, okay, I got to see what they're going to say about this. And I was surprised to see Adam Bly as one of the people they were interviewing. And I was like, whoa, what was that about? And I was uh, shocked because uh, Adam Bly was in it. And I could only imagine that he was told, hey, we're going to do an interview on demons. Would you be willing to talk to us? Because everything Adam Bly said was perfectly in continuity with church teaching. But they cut up his interview to stick it in the side of parts where they made it sound like he was endorsing the idea that demons were actually aliens and uh, these ideas. So it's amazing that you were able to do that. Because that was my fear hearing that you did this with iHeartRadio. So what were your thoughts behind uh, this kind of thing. Yeah, sure. And I, again, I have to admit, I, I heart and, and the producers, frankly, were, were very, very accommodating. Uh, they were very eager to please. They, they wanted to, for us to have the platform, us being the, the church, the, the Catholics, uh, to be able to give our position unadulterated and authentically uh, I have to admit, it's it's been amongst it's been a partnership that that has been very easy uh, and just very gratifying to be part of. One of the things that, that I immediately caught my attention is real curiosity here: a three D binaural podcast. Like I know what binaural means, but how do you is is this a video? This is obviously a video podcast, so it's both video and audio. Like, are you really doing three D video? No, no, it's it's only audio. It's oh, only audio. And the binaural but is what's making it 3D. It's what's making it 3D in terms of sound. Can so you explain the effects, to the audience what binaural means? Sure, sure. So one one of the phenomena that can happen in a room in an exorcism, you know, of course, when you enter when you enter into an exorcism, the, the in a sense, the, the rule of physics or uh, the, 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 the laws of physics are, are optional. <laughs> In other words, the, the enemy can cause things um, like anti-gravity effects. Yeah, the, the, the victim can start levitating or any object in the room can start levitating. There, there'll be remarkable temperature changes that just make no sense. You know, half of the room can be 110 degrees uh, and then half of the room can be 37 degrees and there's no wall in between those that Mm. somehow there's coldness and heat being contained in two different places in the room and so forth but one one of the effects is also uh the fact that hold that thought i'm sorry father uh we're at a network break it's only a minute and a half but hold that thought right there you left us on a cliffhanger uh, right. You, you were talking about all of this uh, paranormal activity that happens during these, or at least some of these exorcist sessions. Take it from there. 
Yeah, so what the binaural 3D audio does is it allows the listener to be inside the room as an exorcism is being reenacted. So you get the experience of being a participant within the room. So the 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 movement of the persons in the room is 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 able to be captured in 3D audio. Uh, in other words, it, it would be just like if you're in a room where, for example, you're at a party and there's kind of movement of people walking around. When you're listening with your headphones, when you're listening to on on a on a device that allows you to experience uh, a 3D rendering, what what you're hearing is the movement in the room. So the, the fading in and out of the voice, the movement of the voice, the movement of, of, of the possessed victim across the room. Mm. And it gives people, this has never been done before in terms of, of exorcism. So it gives people the flavor of what it's like to be in the room. What, what will an exorcist experience? So that, that when, when there's a dialogue, when there's a back and forth between the demon and the priest, what does it sound like? What does it feel like? That's what the listener is going to experience. I should say that to get the full effect of that, the listener really needs to have headphones on. That's uh, right. If you're listening just over like your your phone speakers, it won't really have that same sort of effect. That's right. That's right. Unless you have a very high end mm -hmm. stereo system in your living room, let's mm -hmm. say. Surround sound um, or something like that. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Or if your car has that, then then you'll be able to experience it. Otherwise, no. Now, uh, I've talked to several uh, exorcists in my, my time, Adam Bly being a consultant to exorcist as well. And a lot of times they'll say this type of activity during an exorcism, you know, levitations, uh, uh, violence or aggression or the temperature shifts and all of this sort you know, the head spinning around 360 degrees and vom projectile vomiting like in the movies. They'll say that this is essentially the temper tantrum of, of, of a little brat, which is the demon, like acting like a little brat, hoping to intimidate and scare uh, people. And then once they kind of get past that, once it like, you know, that doesn't affect me anymore, those kind of shenanigans really don't happen. Is that the case from your experience? Absolutely it is, yeah. You know, so, so if there's a new person in the room um, when I conduct an exorcism, uh, and why might there be even a new person in the room. Um, you know, you bring people in the room. Uh, first of all, you need people to be able to hold down the victim and keep the victim from hurting you. You know, you, it, it, of course, the demon takes over the body of the victim from hurting you, from hurting the victim himself, herself. Uh, you, you want them to, to stay put. So generally, you're going to have three really stout men one on each arm holding the victim down in a chair. You, you know, you're usually, you have a metal or a very large oak wooden chair, like a strong chair with a table in front of them. And, and you have the arms being held down onto this table. You have a third man generally at the legs hugging them. To, to, so to, that he's going to prevent kicking and he's going to prevent the victim from being able to stand up and kind of walk away or the demon, I should say from, from standing up and, and, and leaving the room and so forth. So you have these three holders. You also have intercessors. You have, you have people whose job it is to pray there. And so you're bringing in people who have a job. Uh, you, you would have a nurse or a doctor if such is needed. I mean, generally when you have a new case, you, you would have, somebody serving in that capacity, or at least somebody with some wherewithal in terms of medicine, uh, you would not have spectators. You absolutely don't. It would be very dangerous for somebody to come in with an attitude of, hey, I'm just going to watch because I'm going to satisfy my curiosity. Uh, and what you're doing there is you're giving the demon an audience and he's going to feel that. That is already forming a relationship with him. You're, you're deriving entertainment from the presence of the enemy. That is relationship forming. That is absolutely what you do not want. Well, how is, uh, Father, the, how is, because um, someone is asking if by watching this, they're opening the door to the demonic, and you were just speaking about how, you know, we don't want audiences for the devil. Uh, he, we shouldn't bring spectators into exorcisms. And I understand as a, as a recreation, but what's the distinction or difference between that and uh, listening to, to the podcast? 
Sure. And that's a great question. So when this is at heart, this is a catechesis. The, the production is not simply an, 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 well, it's not at all an aggrandizement of the devil. It's, it's not at all uh, an effort to, to give him a stage so that he can put on display what he's able to do and, and, and thereby scare people through it. This is a thoroughgoing catechesis. And, and, you know, one of the things that really spoke to me was a statistic I saw from a recent Pew survey. And it found that the number of religiously unaffiliated persons uh, that from, from the age of 18 to 29 grew from 15% to 20% in just five years. In just five years, that percentage went up one third of wow. people who want nothing to do with religion, with formal religion. Yet at the same time, a different survey found that that same age group, 18 to 29 years old, 63% of that group believes in the existence of demons. So you have this distrust of formal religion on one side, and yet they are in count. Something is happening in their lives that is making them conclude that demons are real. So they're not abandoning the supernatural. They're just abandoning organized religion, and they're kind of setting sail on their own. And in that, in that setting sail, they're encountering the demonic. And so that's, that's an, a really interesting development in a tragic sense. I wanted to speak to that. And so I, in, in, in terms of a podcast, this was a way in which I could try to reach that group of people. You know, they're, they're very technologically comfortable. When you say, hey, there's a free uh, podcast, um, it's available on any platform where you get podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, in Google Play and so forth. Uh, that, that's all you need to tell that crowd. They'll go and find it in five seconds, they'll have it on their phone and they're listening to something. And so that... That is, I, I, you know, wh why wouldn't I just produce a lecture? Because most people are not going to listen to just a lecture. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the old church going lane uh, lady, <laughs> she might be comfortable with a lecture. You might be comfortable with a lecture hearing about demons, but this is going to speak to people who are unchurched and I, I, I know that just in the time that, that it's been released, this podcast has moved to the top of of the the true crime and horror genre, which oh, wow. is a genre, it, it, one of the basic categories in podcasting. So my sister's uh, favorite. Yeah, very popular <laughs> these days. <laughs> so it's 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 designed to keep people in suspense and on the edge of their seats. And, and we 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 thought, you know what, we can do this, but we can do this in a way that is tasteful to the church's mm. teaching, that is not aggrandizing the, the devil, and nobody by listening to it is going to become attached or, or is, is opening himself or herself to a relationship with the devil. I mean, as long as you're in the state of grace yourself, meaning mm. that you're in communion with God, that you have no mortal sin on your soul, <laughs> that you're living a Christian life, uh, there, there's no harm in listening to this. You, you're going to be learning about God's identity primarily through this. Even, even when one is learning about the enemy, one is learning about Satan. That is indirectly a learning about God because Satan forms part of, of, of the cosmology that God has created. Right. Uh, so he is, he, his behavior is an aberration. But learning about an aberration does itself speak to God's original design and plan. And, and that's a fascinating thing. We Catholics, we're fascinated by that kind of thing. Like even, you know, it, it's in our tradition to learn about a banana, for example. Right. 
is to learn about God. Father, as like, we're uh, winding down here, we just have maybe one or two minutes left. I wanted to ask you, you know, obviously this is, uh, thank you for clarifying that uh, that question from one of our listeners, but uh, to follow the thread of, uh, you know, people, people listening and maybe learning a little bit about the Catholic Church, uh, what about the producers? Were they, did they find this uh, interesting? Was it maybe a, a door to open them into coming into the church? Yeah, well, so each one of them was a very, is a very thoroughgoing Christian, very committed to Christ. And the fact that they're working in Hollywood at, at, as Christians already speaks to the, the relationship they have with Christ. Because if, if it wasn't robust and thoroughgoing, they wouldn't have gotten this far in their careers. Uh, but they, uh, our relationship started out very good, and it has only gotten better. Uh, and so they have learned, uh, you know, uh, about all about the Catholic faith and, and their respect for it has increased immensely. Uh, I know that even certain answers or certain questions that I'm asked by when I give these kinds of interviews on, say, Protestant stations, uh, one of them chimes in and gives a very, a very thoroughgoing Catholic answer. So they, they've learned a lot. They've learned a lot. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Well, we're down to the uh, wire here with Father Carlos Martins. The podcast is called The Exorcist Files. Now, how many do we, is there, do you have a finite number of episodes? Is this going to be an ongoing project? There's going to be beginning next Wednesday, two released per week until April. And so your your listeners can chime in uh, wherever they get their, their podcasts, Apple, Spotify, or so forth. But if they want to go to the website, which is exorcistfiles.tv, all of the platforms are listed there. They can also sign up with their email to be notified when the podcasts are released. Okay. I encourage people to do that because they'll be notified of a different project come, happening down the road oh, that geez. I'm working on it also in this area. So. Oh, we'll have you back for that. Exorcistfiles.tv gets signed up on his email list so you get the info. God bless you, Father. Thank you for being on with us today.